I would like to start by reminding a little bit about uh, PQ Web's uh, duality in type 2B and uh, what happens when you place D3 brains in the mix. And then I will discuss in detail uh, abelian mirror symmetry in three dimensions and um, stepwise approach. And then, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. So, and then uh, an approach which is called the stepwise dualization. And then, if we have uh, time, we will uh, try to generalize uh, to the non abelian case. So, these are the brain setups I would like uh, to talk about. Um, let me introduce, uh, first of all, the standard honey, wheat, and brain setups. The, the main players are these three brains. NS5 brains and D5 brains. And uh, usually you draw something like this. You draw, you have an S brains, and then you have D3 stretching between an S brains. So here I uh, explained uh, where are the various brains are stretching. So all of the theories uh, we are discussing will be three dimensional. So the first, all of the brains stretch along the first three directions in type 2B. Then there will be x6, uh, will be the direction where the D3 brains are going. Then there will be NS brains, will go vertically. So this will be x4, 5, and 6, uh, 3, 4, 5. And then uh, we can add the D5 brains, which will go along the, the remaining uh, three directions. So these uh, setups, if we just stop at the first three, or to the first three lines, we have n equal 4 supersymmetry. There will be an SO3 times SO3 symmetry acting on these coordinates, which is the R symmetry of uh, the SO4 R symmetry of the n equal 4 uh, supersymmetry in three dimensions. So what is known is that if you do uh, S duality in type 2B, you replace an S5 brains with D5 brains, and uh, D3 brains stay D3 brains, you will have a different gauge theory. And this is related to 3D mirror symmetry. And this uh, part of the story with n equal 4 supersymmetry is quite well understood. What I would like to do is try to generalize to the case with half uh, su the number of supercharges. So one way to do is, is to rotate some of the brains. So we will have uh, NS5 prime brains, where uh, instead of stretching along 4 and 5, they will stretch along uh, 8 and 9. And for, uh, similarly for the D5 prime, they, instead of stretching along 8 and 9, they will stretch along 4 and 5. So once we do this, we have half of the supersymmetry. So the theories uh, which live uh, at this uh, type of brain setups will have uh, just n equal to supersymmetry in two dimensions. In this case, uh, even uh, drawing a generic brain setup with an S and S prime, D5, D5 prime, one that does, not know what, does not know what is the gauge theory living on it. So what we would like to do is just take one example and try to work out uh, the gauge theory. So one example where we know is the following. We have, um, instead of having uh, just an S5, we put, we put, uh, we have a, we put uh, an S5, and then we put many D5 prime, bra uh, one on top of each other. So this is called the PQ web. If we just do this, this is a five-dimensional theory, because if we take the NS and the D5 prime, you see that they have uh, 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, in common, so it's a five they, they have five directions in common, so this is a five-dimensional gauge theory. In this case, it's, it's an easy gauge theory, it's just three. But what we would like to do is to add uh, a D3 brain going like this, transversely. So this would be now the sixth direction. So if we, this is known what, how to do. Let, let me just do the case where you have uh, two D3 brains arriving on the PQ web, which is what I drew here. And, um, and then we also add the two NS prime brains to just to stop the D3 brains. So what, uh, what is the gauge theory over here? We have, uh, we have an S brain, an S brain, and then we have D3 brains. So we'll be, this will give us two U1 gauge theory if we just put one D3 brain. So I draw it in this way. The uh, circle means a gauge node in the, in the theory. Then we will have uh, by fundamental matters, which, which is, will be something like this. These are massless strings, which will get, will give, these are uh, strings which have uh, zero length, so they will give uh, rise to, the, to massless state, massless uh, multiplets. So this will be chiral multiplets. I use uh, 
arrows. There are two, two of them. And then I will add, uh, I have to add the D5 prime. So if I add just a D5, this will give uh, a fundamental uh, field for this gauge group. If I add the D5 from this part, it will give a fundamental for this. But if I put uh, the D5 uh, prime on top, then I have uh, many massless states going from D3 to D5, which will be fundamental. There will be some fundamental of this group and some fundamental of this group. Then the result is this. So we have uh, um, K arrows going from one to this uh, global symmetry group. So the square means it's a global symmetry group. So I have an SUK global symmetry, another SUK global symmetry. And they have all these type of lines. This was well known. This was known for back from the 90s. Now, there is also superpotential here, which is a cubic superpotential. I just wrote it down. It's related to loops in the, in the quiver. Now, the question is, what happens if I do an S-duality? What happens is that instead of having a, PQ, a, a PQ web with one NS and many D5, I will have a PQ web with uh, many NS, NS brains and one D5. In this case, the answer is not known. What is the gauge theory living over here? It's probably going to be some, uh, a, a billion gauge theory because I have just one D brain, one D3 brain. But uh, the answer was not known. So the purpose of the talk is to, is to, is to work this, uh, this uh, gauge theory out. And along the way, we will uh, find uh, some, uh, uh, some interesting things in involving uh, monopole superpotential, which means uh, we will have gauge theories where uh, um, in the superpotential, there are monopole operators. These are the monopole operators the, which were discussed yesterday. But in the case discussed yesterday, it was n equal 4 supersymmetry, and the superpotential was never involving monopole operators. But with n equal 2, you can add monopole operators to the superpotential, and you don't break the supersymmetry. So first of all, let me review, again, 3D mirror symmetry. So the simplest example is just uh, one um, one gauge group U1 with one flavor, one anti-flavor. And uh, let me add also a singlet. So I will, this is P and this is Q. And then I add a superpotential, which is sigma PQ. So this is actually N equal 4 super young meals, U1 with one flavor. And this is the superpotential, which uh, ensures me that we have uh, N equal 4 uh, supersymmetry. The mirror here is just uh, a free hyper. This, was the, this is the simplest example of uh, 3D mirror symmetry, and this was uh, given by Intrilligator and Cyberg, I think, back in 96. If you draw the, PQ, the, PQ, the brain setup over here, we have two NS5, one D3, one D5. When I do the S duality, I get an S5. So this is a free hyper. These are the massless strings that give the free hyper. And this is U1 with one flavor. So we can read off this, the duality very easily from, uh, from the brain setup. What is important here is that um, what is the mapping of the, of, the operator, of the operators? So here we have, um, we have two, two free fields. Let's call it P and Q, free chiral fields in n equal to notation. And uh, what are the fields which are mapped over these two free fields? These are the monopole operators of this U1 with one flavor. So if we call them uh, M plus and then minus, we have that this is uh, mapped uh, under the mirror symmetry in this way. We also have another gauge invariant operator, which is sigma here. So where is uh, sigma mapped? If you remember from the talk for yesterday, I, the sigma satisfies some quantum relation, which is the following. Sigma is equal to m plus and minus. So sigma is mapped to the, map, to the product of P and Q. OK, are there questions about this? OK, so let's try to do, um, so this is the basic, very basic example. The next uh, example would be U1 with n flavors. But and we can do it for n equal four, and then we will have some generalization. We will have a sigma to the sigma to the k equal to a plus and minus. This is what uh, was explained yesterday. So first of all, let me modify this uh, duality a little bit to go to an n equal two dualities. What we do is that we can flip 
some field. What does it mean, flipping a field? It means that, let's say we have a gauge theory with, uh, with some operator O. We, we, we couple this operator O to a new field, sigma. And, uh, and we, we get, um, uh, so we have some theory with some superpotential and some operator O. We change the superpotential in this way. And we add a new field. So in this case, I want to flip uh, this operator uh, sigma. So the superpotential will be uh, sigma PQ. This will go in sigma PQ plus sigma times, let's call the flipping field X. So in this case, you can see that sigma and X become massive. So I, should, I can integrate them out. Uh, so I have to use the equation of motion of sigma and x to integrate them out. What I get is that I get w equals 0. And uh, I, I'm left, I, I lost both of these fields. So I started from uh, u1 with one flavor in n equal 4. I flipped uh, this singlet, and I just get uh, u, u1 n equal 2 with one flavor and w equals 0. So basically I lost this, sing this singlet. What happens on this side, I have to flip uh, sigma, but sigma is uh, p, p times q on this side. So the duality now, the mirror duality becomes uh, th uh, a theory with three fields, which I can call sigma pq, and w is equal to sigma pq. So this is an n equal 2 duality, which is the simplest one you can have, and it's just the, uh, equivalent to the n equal 4 duality. Just you can go from one to the other, flipping uh, one field. This is called usually XYZ model. It's a, it's a Vestumino model. There is no gauge symmetry over here. But this, now it's, in the, it's a duality between two interacting field theories. So this is a n equal 2 mirror symmetry, the simplest one. So now we can try to do something more general. We can go and do U1 with the K flavors. So we start to get something similar to this. You see, now here we have the U1 with K plus 1 flavors. So let's try to do U1 with K flavor. This is a, the one way to do it is to use uh, this duality in this direction, or the duality I, I, we had before in this direction. So we have P and Q, which are two free fields, and we can replace them with U1 with uh, three fields and the superpotential. So, but now I want to do it for each flavor over here. So I will pick uh, the first, uh, let's call this uh, small B. I, will, I want to pick uh, the pair PI, QI for each I and replace it with a U1 with the flavor and the sigma I. So once I do this, uh, what happens over here? I have uh, a U1. This is what uh, I call stepwise dualization. This type of approach was uh, advocated by Kapustin and Strassler always in the 90s. Where now the superpotential, so I, I replace every, every pair of uh, fundamental fields with a U1 with one flavor. I do this K times, so I have K object like this. So now this theory is not a U1 theory anymore, it's a U1 to the K plus 1 gauge theory. And there will be a superpotential which has uh, K terms sigma i, pi, qi. But now what is the, there is something missing in this picture and uh, is the following, that when I replace uh, uh, this fundamental field here, these uh, fundamental fields are, uh, become the monopole operators. So these fundamental fields were charged under the, the U1. So this means that the, the monopole operators of all these uh, K gauge theories must be charged under, the gauge, under this uh, original U1. The way to do is, is to add the BF couplings. So what is a BF coupling? Some, you see, this is like a Chern-Simon coupling. So a Chern-Simon coupling is usually for abelian theory, something like ADA. But if I use different gauge groups, gauge fields, then I will have uh, something like uh, ADB or, or BDA. Let me put it like this, BDA. But DA is usually called F, so this is a BF coupling. 
because of. So I, I, I started from a theory which is U1 with K flavor. Now I have a theory with many U1s, the same number of flavor, of, fla of charge multiplets. I added the K singlets, sigma i. And then I have to add ma many BF couplings in the Lagrangian. These are equivalent. I just use the, the, the basic mirror symmetry K times. But now something happens here. That we see that this, this U1 doesn't have flavor anymore. This means that I can do, it, I can do exactly the path integral over here. So once I do this, this path integral gives me a delta function because this, uh, this, uh, gauge, this gauge field, I can exactly integrate over this gauge field, U1. This will, me, will give me a delta function that tells me that a functional delta function, that the sum of all these uh, field strands is zero. So I can think of this, uh, of this theory as the product of k u1 with one flavor, but then there is the relation that the sum of all the field strands must be zero. So a different presentation for this theory is something like this. Take a linear quiver with, instead of k gauge groups, I have to put k minus one. And then uh, I have many, many singlet fields, which are uh, uh, flip. I have many singlet fields which are, uh, which are flipping to zero, the, all these uh, bifundamental fields. So this is the statement. Now, this is the statement about 3D mirror symmetry for abelian gauge theories. U1 with k flavor is dual, is mirror to a linear quiver. What we did is just assumed that the original uh, symmetry was correct, and then we proved this. So if, we, if you believe the first uh, original uh, duality, then, you can, you, then uh, this, is, this, is just a, this just follows. One way to see this through brains is the following. We can start from here that we have uh, an NS brain, a D5, uh, an S prime brain, which is rotated. So we have N equal to. Then here we put many D5. And then we do the S duality. What happens? The D5 become an S. And then we, here we have a, a D5 prime. And here we have a D5. So we see that also in this picture, we have a linear quiver. So many U1s, one connected to the other. And then there is a flavor for the first one and the flavor for the last one, which is precisely this. So again, all this goes back to uh, 97, I think. But uh, this type of procedure is, um, is some kind of procedure that we can try to apply to this theory. So here we have uh, k, uh, k, um, k plus k plus one pairs of, of fundamental fields where I can apply this basic step. When, when I do this, I will create many U1s. So we can already see that the, um, here we will have a theory which even if it looks like there are only <laughs> Uh, you know, the, the, the NS brains are all, all on top of each other, we will get a theory with many U1s, which is kind of strange. Anyways, let's first do the case k equal 1, because in the case k equal 1, you already know the result, <laughs> and also we learn uh, something. So the case k equal 1, we have from one side, we have uh, this theory, U1, U1, there are six fields. And from the other side, we know what is the theory, with the theory here, because we have just one and S5. It's basically pretty much the same theory, but it's not gauged. So there are six fields, which are, you can see them as massless strings going from D brains to D brains. But there are no gauge fields, because there, are, there is just one and S brain. In order to have gauge field, you need two and S brains, and D3 that can slide upon them. Uh, and we have this type of superpotential, the cubic superpotential. So this would be uh, NS, NS, D5, D5. And here we, al we always have the same 1-1 one, one PQ web, which upon uh, S duality goes into itself. So this the, is the same on both sides. OK, so we can try to to understand this duality, uh, but uh, 
the way, one way to understand this dual, well, first we would like to prove it, using, using, always using the basic abelian mirror symmetry. So uh, all this talk is based on a paper, let me write maybe, the, that I wrote with Sara Pasquetti, which is uh, 1605, uh, 02, 675. And uh, in the paper, we prove uh, uh, this duality. But along the way, we found the third theory, which uh, has just one gauge group. And uh, so it act this, du this duality actually becomes a, tri a triality. So one way to find uh, a theory with uh, one gauge group is to basically start uh, from, from here. So let's, t let's put here k equal 3. So you see that the matter content is the same as this. We have a linear quiver u1 cross u1. The difference is that here we have uh, three singlets with uh, this type of superpotential. Here we have zero singlets and the different superpotential. So here the superpotential is, uh, if we call this P and Q, the superpotential is uh, APQ plus A tilde, P tilde, Q tilde. So what can we do is that we can try to, to modify these to arrive to arrive here. But we know that there is a, a mirror in this case, which is U1 with three flavors. Without uh, superpotential. So let's try to add uh, here, we can deform and add sigma i xi. Well, so we have three singlet fields and we flip the sigma i. If we follow the map, the mirror map, the sigma i's were, were, uh, were uh, so this is like pi qi, this was were like pi qi. So there are three sigmas and here there are three mesons that I can write. So what, what it means is that here I should add a superpotential which is uh, xi pi qi. So three terms in the superpotential. So I can write, let me write this differently in this way. So now I break the SU3 global symmetry to U1 uh, to some power. And here, again, I can integrate out sigma and x, and I get W equals 0. So this is a different presentation of the basic duality, but this goes, uh, now we are getting something similar to here. Now we have to add uh, this type of superpotential, APQ. So what was the, the map uh, before? When we had U1 with K flavors, the map of the mesons, so we had the P, I, Q, I is a matrix of mesons. So let me do, let's do the case of three mesons, of three flavors. Then here I have P1, Q1, P3, Q3. And this is a non-trivial aspect, which is not discussed usually. So the, the, the diagonal one, are go, they were going to, see, to the sigmas in the basic abelian mirror symmetry, the off-diagonal one, they're going to monopole operators. So for instance, P1Q2 goes to the monopole operators which charge uh, 1 and 0. So here I have two gauge groups. So when I say monopole operators, I have to assign the charge under both gauge group. Then I can have uh, the monopole operators which charge 1 and 1, and this goes this is mapped to P1Q3. Then I have charge <coughs> 0 and 1, and this goes to the other one. On this half, uh, on this triangle is the same, but with uh, negative charges. So this is the map for the basic mirror symmetry for U1 with three flavors, and it's possible to generalize. Here we also have mesons, M with charge plus 1 here is mapped to the operator product of all the PIs, and then with charge minus is mapped to the operator product of all the QIs. So we have a linear quiver, we take the product of all the operators going in this direction, we get a gauge invariant, this gauge invariant is mapped to a monopole on the other one. On the other hand, here we have, mes we have a mesons, quadratic gauge invariant, these are mapped to a monopole on this. This is a generic feature of mirror symmetry, which is mapping normal operators to monopole operators. 
So if you have some relations which are satisfied by normal operators from one side, they will become a quantum relation for monopoles on the other one. Okay, so here we want to add uh, APQ to the story, which is the product of all the P in this direction. So we want to add uh, the superpotential. This is uh, P1, P2, and P3. We want to add to the superpotential P1, P2, P3, plus the other P1 tilde, P2 tilde, P3 tilde. So we get... Uh, now, this theory, if we do this, becomes the theory describing the PQ web. But we saw that what, what are these uh, two terms mapped? These are mapped to the monopole. So here we have to add monopoles plus one, plus monopole minus one. So, say it again. This is a U1 cross U1 gauge theory with some superpotential, which is precisely the one that we know describes this PQ web. This is dual to a U1 gauge theory with three flavors, three singlets, and monopole superpotential, which is not obvious, obviously related to the, to, the brain, to the brain picture. But this is a, this is a duality. Now, it is also possible to, to, do, to show that this duality, one way to do is, I'm just going to sketch the, the discussion, one way to do is to think about this theory as a, a U1 with two flavors, well, so we have two incoming arrows and two outgoing arrows. But then I gauge these two U1s together. So basically I take U1 with two flavors and uh, these flipping fields. Then I gauge and I get this theory. But if instead of starting from U1 with two flavors and the flipping field, I start from its, mir from its mirror, which is just U1 with two flavors, I get uh, some theory which uh, if you inspect a little better, you see that actually becomes... Uh, so from one side I have uh, this, from the other side I have U1 with two flavors. This is the mirror symmetry for, K, for two, U1 with two flavors. Now I gauge something over here and I get that theory. So these are uh, U1 cross U1 gauge theory. When I, gauge, when I do the same gauging here, I get the product of two separated theories, which is U1 with one flavor two times. But this, again, is equal using the XYZ. This is equal to XYZ model, and this is equal to another XYZ model using duality again. So I see that the product of two XYZ models is equal to this theory. But this is exactly what, what we have here. We have six fields with two superpotential coupling, which are XYZ. So basically what, what we found is that there is a triality here. This is one presentation, this is another, and this is obviously related to the brain system. This is another, and this is related to the S-dual brain system. So what we want to do in the next uh, half an hour is to generalize uh, this triality in two different directions. One is to add more NS5, and the other is to just uh, look at this... Uh, so one is to generalize this part of the triality, and one is to generalize this part of the triality. Where here we have a U1 with three flavors, and here we have just the Vestumino model. So what we're going to do is that here we can replace U1 with a three flavor with U and C with an F flavor generically, add the, the monopoles and see what happens. There will be another dual. This will be a Haroni cyber type of duality. But for the moment, let's just try to generalize uh, in this direction. <coughs> Are there questions? Okay, so let's apply this stepwise dualization to, the, to this theory. So here I have many... I have, I have the two U1s, 
Then instead of taking A and A tilde, which are this bifundamental, I just replace it with uh, the usual big A, big A tilde, and sigma A. Then instead of having PI, PI tilde, I replace it with uh, U1. So I have sigma I, PI, big QI, PI tilde big, and so on. So I have K of those. Same story from the other side. And I have all the BF couplings, which are connecting me. And then I have a BF coupling like this. So I just used the 2K plus 1 times the basic abelian bill of symmetry on this gauge theory. And I get this strangely looking uh, object. Now I can do the integral of the two U1s. I get two deltas now. When I implement the delta, I get a linear quiver exactly like the beginning. Then I get this uh, U1 in the middle here. So these are A and A tilde. Here I have K minus 1. And then I get another linear quiver from the other side. And then I have all the singlets. I'm not drawing. I'm not drawing the singlets, but there will be many singlets. 2K plus 1. OK, so we see that what we are, do, we are getting here is a theory with many U1 gauge groups, which should describe this brain system. We should be careful about the superpotential, because uh, here we have all the singlets and all this type of superpotential, which will be sum of sigma i, pq, pi, qi, pi, p and so on. So we have all this type of uh, flipping superpotential. But then we also have the superpotential coming from this cubic. So what is this going to become? It will become some monopole operator superpotential. But the monopole operator here is not, li is not local on the quiver. So for instance, the terms uh, PIQIA will be a monopole, so the superpotential here will be this. Then we have sigma a, a, a tilde. Then we have something similar to this with the tilde, with the, with the q's. But then we have a monopole. So the monopole will be something like all zeros, 1, 1, 1 all zeros. This will be one monopole term associated to P1, Q1, A, P1 tilde, Q1 tilde, A tilde. Sorry, this is just the first half. Then we have the same with the minus. All zeros, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, and so on. Then we can do P2, Q2, A, and this will be this object, 0, 0, 1, 1, then we have 1 in the middle. So this notation is the charge. These are all the charges under all these U1s. This one uh, is the, the one in the middle. 0, and the same with the minus. And the, and the last one will be M with all 1 all the way. So we have many monopole operators, 2K monopole, 2K monopole operators, half with the plus sign, half with minus sign, but they will involve uh, uh, they will involve uh, uh, groups which are not uh, attached to each other. So this is not local in the quiver. Usually everything was, uh, when you have a quiver with n equal 4 supersymmetry, every, every node will just talk with the, next, with, the with the nearest neighbor. This is a little bit more complicated. Another thing we can do, we can use the result from before and replace uh, this U1 with three flavor in the middle with the square. So before we remember, if you remember, we, have a, we had this duality. So 
we can, we can apply this duality inside here and we get uh, a theory with one less uh, gauge group because th this is one gauge group, this is zero. And we have six fields. So this is a presentation which in the case k equal one uh, reduces to what we know. The other one didn't reduce. So now we have four different theories. We have, we have this theory, then we have uh, this one which would be the dual of here. And then we can also use this uh, duality inside both to change the presentation a little bit. If you use this presentation, we lose this, um, th this term, the sigma tilde A tilde, we, but we get, uh, if we call this is uh, P1, Q1, P1 tilde, Q1 tilde, and this is uh, X, X tilde, we have a cubic term. Px, P1, Q1, plus x tilde, P1 tilde, Q1 tilde. And here we lose the one in the middle, and it's just like this. So again, we have many superpotential operators. We have the cubic terms, and then we have flipping terms. So this, is, this will be the result for this uh, question mark that I drew before. And... Uh, uh, yeah, the, the interesting thing is that there are many U1s, m more than uh, you would get if you spread this K NS5 brains. Because we have K NS5 brains, you, so if in N equal 4, you would expect K minus 1 U1s, but here we get uh, 2K minus 1, so twice, almost twice as much. And then we have all these monopole uh, superpotentials. So this is the result. Um, so I think for, with, for the one thing one can do is to map uh, the chiral rings from here to here. This is not easy. We just mapped the generators of the chiral ring because uh, it's easy to study the mesons. It's not easy to study the, all, the, whole mo the, the whole set of monopole operators. So for instance, here we have many mesons which are mapped uh, into many monopole operators that you can construct here. And then we have a few monopoles, just the one you can construct out of these two U1s. And these are mapped to many mesons of many type of normal uh, meson operator you can find over here. But you can check that at least at the level of uh, the generators of the chiral ring, there is a perfect uh, matching between the two sides. Okay, if there are no questions, I will go back uh, to this duality again. So let me write it again. So from one side we have uh, uh, U1 with fifth flavor and the superpotential is, uh, let's call it this PI, PI tilde. The superpotential is uh, sigma. There are three flipping terms, sigma i, pi, pi tilde. And then there is the monopole with charge plus one and the monopole of charge minus one. This is this side of the duality. From the other side, you just have six fields, a, b, c, a tilde, b tilde, c tilde. And the superpotential is a, b, c plus a tilde, b tilde, c tilde. So this presentation of the duality is not SU3 invariant. So what we can do is to get rid of all this uh, of the three of the three singlets in such a way that we have uh, SU3 times SU3 global symmetry. So what we have to do here is to add the sigma i xi. Now we have to look at the map. So here we will we will we will be introducing some more cubic terms because the sigma i are mapped to quadratic operators over here. The end result is the following. We have a U1 with three flavors and just the simplest monopole, M plus one plus M minus one, is dual to this object. So what is this? Where I, this is Xij. This, are a, this is a bifundamental matrix of SU3 times SU3. So there are nine fields. We, have set th we, we started from six fields. We added three fields. And the, and the superpotential is just the determinant of x 
as a matrix, as a 3 by 3 matrix. So there are nine terms in the superpotential. In this way, you can see immediately that uh, the SU3 times SU3 global symmetry here is preserved also on this side. Uh, one, uh, one thing is that uh, the duality, this duality, this duality we discussed uh, at the level of the field theory, but if you put uh, the field theory on S3, so we take n equal, this is what uh, in the previous talk we heard about, this S3 partition functions for n equal to gay, n equal to on S3, you will find some, um, some partition function on both sides. And uh, this will be something like uh, dx, and then we will have uh, three times, we have uh, sb of x plus mi sb of minus x plus mi tilde. So this will be a u1 gauge theory with uh, three flavors and three entry flavors. And from this side, you will see that there is just a product of, uh, of three, of, of nine, uh, uh, of nine uh, singlets. So we, you, basically, you, you, will, you are projecting down the duality from the level of the full gauge theory to the level of a strip partition function. You will find some identity. This is the identity, it doesn't really matter. But this identity was already present in the literature. So for instance, already in 2002, there was a paper that was discussing this identity. Of course, they, they didn't know about the relation with uh, gauge theories, and this was called ultimate integral identity, because uh, apparently in their, uh, for their purposes, which was some integrable system story, was, uh, this was a very a basic identity. Otherwise, it's also known as a new pentagon identity. Okay, so what we did uh, in a paper which we didn't publish yet with uh, Francesco Benini and Sara Pasquetti is to try to generalize this story to the case where you have uh, U and C with an F flavor. So I just tell the, you the result. The result is you have NC, then we have an F flavors. And the superpotential here is just M plus plus M minus. So these are the two basic monopole in U and C. We charge, uh, so M plus is the following. The charges are, are uh, if we go on the, the cartan of U and C, they will be plus one and all zeros. This is M plus. M minus will be something like all zeros and minus one. So these are two different monopole operators. We have to add two, both of them to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the Lagrangian. And once we do this, we are, uh, we are left with uh, the global symmetry, which is uh, SU and F square. Because the monopole operators, are, if you don't have uh, the Lagrangian here, you have SU and F square, but then you have a U1 topological symmetry and the U1 axial symmetry. But this M plus and the minus are both charged under uh, both the two U1 symmetries with different charges, so you're breaking both of them. And the dual is, uh, okay, let me try, U and F minus and C minus two with uh, two N flavors. With the NF flavor, sorry. And the superpotential is the usual cyber superpotential, so some i and j, m i j, q i, q j. So this is a very similar to the Aroni duality, but the Aroni duality doesn't have the minus two. And then here we have the other superpotential is again m plus plus m minus, where this m plus and m minus are the monopole operators of the dual gauge group. And here is another difference. The Aroni duality, there is a flipping of the two monopoles. Here we don't have any flipping, but they are both appear in the superpotential. And again, here the, the global symmetry is SU and F squared. So one way to argue for the symmetry, one can check that this duality makes sense. For instance, one can compute the modular space of aqua on both sides, and it matches. Um, 
Another way to argue for the symmetry, which also provides a ultraviolet completion for the theory, is that because the one question you can ask here is whether uh, starting from just U and C with an F flavor and adding this, super, this, is this superpotential is relevant. So generically, if, if NF is too big, the superpotential is not relevant. The, the boundary case is uh, NF equal to NC plus 1, anyway. But we can start from uh, a duality in four dimension. So this is a 3D, N equal to duality. We can start from a duality in four dimension, which is a USP duality. USP 2 and C with NF flavors. Usually it's called two NF with the two NF flavors. So this is not anomalous in the four dimension. And there is a, du a dual, which is the interligator Pouliot dual, which is USP 2 and F minus 2 and C minus 2 with 2 and F squared flavors. And here there is a superpotential, which is uh, M Q Q. Is, this is very similar to, can you read here? Okay. So basically you are, this is like the, the cyber duality for uh, USP gauge groups. If you take NC equal 1, USP 2 is SU2. And um, so th this is the notation I'm using. So this you can reduce to three dimension. You find the same duality, except that when you reduce to three dimension, you are turning on a monopole superpotential. So in 3D, let's just go to directly in 3D. You have this duality, but now the superpotential here is the monopole, which is there is just one monopole for USP. And again, here we have the monopole. Now there is a way, so th this theory has SU2 and F global symmetry. You, there is a way to add, uh, to turn on real masses in such a way that the USP is broken down to U and C, and uh, 2 and F is broken down. Half of the flavors become massless, half become massive, half of the flavor. Remain. So, but now the, the superpotential gets, uh, doing this, again, you are uh, going, you are giving some expectation value, and giving some expectation value, this is a mechanism which was discussed by Polyakov back in the 70s, uh, generates monopole super, can generate a monopole superpotential in the infrared. So here we get monopole plus plus monopole minus. So we get precisely this. And if we do the same on the mirror, on the dual, we get precisely this dual. So, okay, so this is another generalization of this, uh, tri of this reality I was discussing at the beginning. One nice thing is that if you plug NF equal to 2 and C plus 2, which is the, in some sense the self-dual point, where uh, there are charges, for instance, of the, of the basic fields will be exactly one half. So it, uh, if you're familiar with the cyber duality in four dimension, if you have SUN with 2 N flavors, it's a similar situation. Uh, this theory lives at the S-duality wall of a four-dimensional uh, gauge theory, which is uh, SUN with N equal to, with two and F flavors. N equal, so this is N equal to in 4D. So it, it, this theory can have a duality wall. This were discussed by Lefloc, and he found some sort of duality like this, but he didn't he didn't show that there is a monopole uh, superpotential. So and the, so some things are not uh, really working well. So anyway, so last comment I want to make is that uh, if you start from this S duality wall, uh, the, you have a codimension one. Uh, which we, you have a wall in four dimension. On the wall, there is a three-dimensional theory, which is precisely this type of theories with the monopoles. So these are mo these are uh, this is another example where going from uh, higher dimension to lower dimension, you generate monopole uh, monopole superpotential. The other example was when you compactify on S1, you generate uh, one monopole superpotential, and, and also here. So yeah. 
I think I can uh, I think I can stop here.